Okay. Now, I know that most of you know the difference primarily between FHA and conventional. But what I want to do this morning is kind of give you a breakdown on these nine things that truly are different between FHA and conventional so that you can rapidly refer to any of those nine things. If someone says, I, you know, I'm going to be doing an FHA loan. Now, if someone does say to you, I'm going to be doing an FHA loan, what would be your normal response to that? They say, yeah, Lanier, I'm going to be doing an FHA loan. What would you say to them? That's great. Have you spoken with the lender? Do you know if conventional is an, an option for you? Okay, perfect. Anybody else? Why would you want to do FHA? That's typically my first question. Because I'll get people that say, you know, they're pretty adamant. They want to, they, they, we, I know, we know we're going to be doing FHA loan. And my first question to them is, okay, I, you know, my first response to them is, okay, that's fine. FHA is a great loan. Out of curiosity, why FHA? Not there's anything wrong with it, just why FHA? And then that's when they start stumbling around. Well, I just want to pay less money down or someone told me that that's really the best loan for me. Okay, fine. Did they explain why it's the best loan for you? And again, they'll start stumbling. So usually when someone says, I want to do either this loan or that loan, whatever it happens to be, my first response is, okay, good, that's a good loan, but why are you aiming in that direction if you don't mind me asking? And then Oftentimes, not 100% of the time, but most of the time, you'll find people start stumbling a little bit. And again, my intention is to actually open up options for them. Why are they saying that? Did they get that information from somebody at work, from a lender, something they read online? Now, if someone says, you know, I'm going to be doing a conventional loan, but put 20% down, what do you say? That's what? Go ahead. That's great. Why? Why? Exactly. Why? Just out of curiosity, nothing wrong with 20%. Why 20%? What would most people say to you when you ask them why 20%? No PMI. No PMI. All right, fine. And so what do you say then? Have you spoken to a lender? There are sometimes options out there to avoid PMI, even putting less money down. Thank you. Perfect. And all of a sudden, what happens? You become the expert, exactly. And that's what we want to do here. We're going to give you some just real quick things, because there's nine of them on here, that'll help make you that much stronger of the expert without having to tell them much. Because you're just going to ask a few questions and hopefully dismiss. So on the first thing is the FHA versus conventional down payment. FHA's minimum down payment's how much? I know most of you know that one. 3.5%. Minimum down payment. What's conventional's minimum down payment? How much? 3%. Anybody else want to try something? 3 or 5. And the reason I'm going to put 3 or 5... Anybody tell me why we would do 3% or 5%? Why not just 3%? First-time home, First home buyer. Who's the other one that gets 3% down if they want it? Anybody know? Home possible, home ready. Those are two income-based programs off of uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. And so they can do 3% down regardless of whether they've owned a home in the past or not. It's all based on income. But it's either 3% or 5% either way. You don't have to put down 20%. That's kind of a myth that people will have in the market. Upfront mortgage insurance. Let's start over here. How much upfront mortgage insurance do you have to pay on a conventional loan? Zero. Zero. Nothing. How much upfront mortgage insurance do you pay on FHA? 1.75. 1.75. That is a big deal. Because if you have someone who's borderline between FHA or conventional, 
And even though the rate might be a little bit better, when we get down to rates, we'll talk about that, might be a little bit better on the uh, FHA. But oh my gosh, if they'll put down just one and a half percent more, they're gonna, they're gonna build, I mean immediately at closing, they're gonna have all this extra equity. Because here they're gonna put 3.5% down and they're gonna give up half of that. Here they're gonna put 5% down and they're gonna keep it all. So if you think about it, the, this makes so much of a difference versus a 5% down. After closing, they're gonna have 1.75% equity here. 1.75, they're gonna spend 3.5% but only have 1.5% equity. Here they're gonna put down 5%, they're gonna have 5% equity. That is substantially different. So they're gonna put down 1.5% more but they're gonna walk away with almost 3% more equity, which is huge. So sometimes, even though the rate might be a little bit better here, be careful because that can knock them out. Now, if your score is down at 640, we'll talk about that in a little while, then it won't make any difference. All right, monthly MI. Now, this varies quite a bit. Anybody know what the general multiplier is for FHA? And I wouldn't expect that you might know that one, but the general multiplier is point zero zero eight five. In other words, every FHA loan, I don't care how much money you put down, you're going to pay monthly mortgage insurance. People think that if you put 20% down on FHA loan, you don't pay monthly mortgage insurance. Wrong. You pay monthly mortgage insurance on every FHA loan. The difference is, if you put down more than 3.5%, then this number from 00, 0 0.0085 drops to 0 0.0080 not much, does not move much. But either way, you're gonna pay it. Conventional, yes? That's times the loan amount? Times loan amount divided by 12. Yeah, take that times loan amount divided by 12, that's your monthly mortgage insurance. Now, they don't call it, FHA does not call it PMI. That's a conventional term. We all call it PMI. FHA's official term for it is M I P. Okay. What's that? I. <laughs> they just, you know, FHA's got to do it their way. M I P versus P M I. Who knows? But in any event, um, monthly monthly M I varies here. Varies on two things. What? What are the two things that will drive monthly mortgage insurance on uh, conventional? Anybody know? What's that? Down payment and credit score. Exactly. Down payment and credit score. Those two things drive your monthly mortgage insurance on, on uh, conventional. Here's the interesting thing. Even though FHA may have a little bit better rate, and when we talk about it, we'll get down there, but if you have to pay one of these two amounts, and let's say you have a score at about 695, I mean, you're, if you're putting down enough money and your credit score is 685, you're putting out 5% or 10% and your score is 695, you're gonna get a much, much lower PMI rate on conventional than you will on FHA. That can make up the difference in the spread of your interest rate. Again, you're not gonna figure all that out, lender is, but I just want you to be aware of it so that when you're speaking to somebody, you're talking to them as their expert. That's really all we're trying to drive. DTI flexibility. I, I, I think everybody knows what DTI is, right? Debt to income ratio. ratio. Thank you, DTI, debt to income ratio. This is a big deal, FHA. FHA will allow you to go on the back end, the total debt to income. Again, depending on the credit score. If you're below 640, it isn't gonna happen. But if you're above 640, certainly if you're above 660, you can go up to about 55 to as much as maybe 
57 or 58 percent debt to income ratio. That's the total? Total debt to income, not housing debt to income. Total debt to income ratio. What's the housing? A lot of flexibility. What's that? What's the housing? Again, it's going to vary a little bit. It, typically, you want to be below 41, but you can actually go as high as 46, 47. It varies a little bit. All dependent on credit score. I don't care how good your credit score is. What's that? Is that where you live in it, or if it's rented out? Is, that, Say, is the housing different? Housing is a good question. Housing is, in fact, that's going to be the nugget that's coming out later today. I don't know if any of you watch the mortgage moment nuggets I'm doing, but that's the one that's coming out later today is housing debt to income. It's only a one minute reel, but it'll come out later today. Housing debt to income is just the new house payment as a percentage of your gross income. Total debt to income is the new house payment plus your monthly obligations as a percentage of your gross monthly income. Housing is just the, the first number. Now, um, housing debt to income can, can be get very flexible on conventional depending on your credit scores. DTI flexibility, I don't care how good your credit score is. You're, unconventionally, you're not going to go to 55. We can get to about 51, maybe even 51.4 if you've got an 800 score, but below that, you're not. Typical guideline here on, on DTI for a conventional loan, generally speaking, it's 49.9%. Generally speaking, again, that number can vary quite a bit. I have a loan that's closing next week Friday. That loan that's closing next week Friday, my borrower has 800 credit scores. She's getting a small house. She's only putting 5% down. Her, her housing debt and total debt to income are about the same. She's got one $30 a month payment. They're 48, so it's 48.7, 48.9. And she went right through, no problem. Now, if the score were below, say the score were at 695, that isn't going to fly. But I think the thing to bear in mind is sometimes we'll ask, like when I'm talking to somebody about FHA or conventional, and they tell me they really want to do a FHA loan, and I ask them why, and they, if they say to me, well, Greg, I think my debt-to-income ratio is going to be too high for conventional, that means they've spoken to somebody and they're a little bit educated because that could very well be. Sometimes we just have to go just because of DTI flexibility. Or what the lender can do is, is there anything you can pay off over there? All right. Okay, credit score flexibility. You know, on a conventional loan, most lenders, this is not necessarily everybody, but most lenders, including us, we don't go below 640 on conventional. Okay, so on credit scores, we're going to be 640 or above on conventional. Now, I mean, in the last four, five, six years, if I have done three or four conventional loans that were below 660, that's a lot. Because usually if you're between 640 and 660, there's reasons why, and we probably are going to move here because I'm going to save you quite a bit of money on your interest rate and your PMI is going to be pretty much about the same because of where your score is on that conventional loan. But conventional can go this low. If somebody's putting 50% down on a house, guess what? We're going to probably put them in conventional even if their score is 645 because now they're not going to have PMI where over here they will and they'll have up front. So there's a little bit of games we lenders are going to play to make this work hopefully in the best interest of the client. Credit scores here, you know, I will tell you, credit scores that we use for, um, and again, this is not FA, HUD does not have any credit score requirements. HUD does not. Lenders do. In our, in our case, we do not go below 600. When you read online, you're going to find a lot of people will go down to 685, or ex, 685, excuse me, 585. But I can promise you this, once you get below 620, certainly below 600, everything else changes. 
The only thing that doesn't change is your monthly MI. You're putting 3.5% down, getting an FHA loan, got a score of 601. Guess what? 0085 is still going to be your multiplying factor. Doesn't change. But everything else changes. Rates change. Debt to income flexibility changes. I mean, heck, debt to income flexibility, I told you, 55 to 57, you got a score around 601. You're probably going to be somewhere around 35%, maybe. So everything changes based on credit score. Everything. But again, rule of thumb, I can go down to 600. <laughs> if you go below that, and some of you have had examples. The only reason I know is because you come to my office and say, how come I can't get this loan closed? Not my loan, one of your lender's loans. You can't get the loan closed because somebody made a promise that they could get somebody a loan and they got a score at 595. And it would think they might be able to do it, but rules change once you get this low. All right, interest rates. I'm not going to get into any of the math behind it. I can just tell you this. Lower than conventional. Rates are just lower on FHA than they are on conventional. It just happens. The higher you go in the credit score, the less of that spread. But you get down below 700, certainly if you get below um, 680, the spread between an FHA rate and a uh, conventional rate is going to be fairly large. So if, if there's a half a point difference or even five eighths difference, wow, that makes a pretty big difference. And then you're not going to make that up. If you're, if you're at 661 credit score, you're not going to make that up on your monthly MI on a conventional loan. So take advantage of it. The other thing about the good, the lower rates here is I can get to a DTI number I need to get to. Make sense? On Wednesday, Mike and I are going to be chatting about some things that talk about how this is driven and why you're getting interest rates that you're talking to borrowers that have points and you can't find loans with no points. Some of you have had that experience recent in the last maybe four months. Greg, how come everybody that I'm talking to has to have pay points? There's a reason for that. We'll talk about it a little bit on Wednesday. That's changing if the market continues to get better, which it is. But right now, pretty much most loans have points on them. Kind of frustrating, but it'll go away relatively soon. Appraisal. Somebody give me an idea on the difference between FHA and a conventional appraisal. I'm sorry? There might be conditions on an FHA. Okay, anybody else? Something else? What's that? Doesn't FHA have like their own appraiser? Does FHA have their own panel? No, FHA does not have their own panel. It's the same appraiser. They pay more attention to like broken windows, AC, you know, like the functional part of the home. Okay. They're going to look. They're going to be a little bit more careful with some of the functional parts of the home. That is the difference. Uh, that, the amendatory clause, when you do an FHA financing exhibit, there, I, think it's, I think it's item number 11 on the exhibit. It specifically states that if, if that appraisal does not come in at value, you do not have to buy the house, period. You cannot override that. Some people will put a stipulation in the special stips and say that if the, if the house does not come in, the buyer has agreed to pay for it anyway. That's all well and good, but between you and I, HUD says they don't care what you put there. HUD says this is what it is. You don't, you're not going to override HUD by putting a special stip in there. But the special stip's good because it lets the seller know what my intention is as a buyer. But again, buyer doesn't have to buy it. Now, here's the interesting thing. It's the same appraiser. VA has their own panel, but not FHA and conventional. Same appraisers. So the same appraiser that does FHA is going to go out and do my conventional appraisal. 
I've had some situations where I've moved, I've flipped the loan. We started it out FHA because this credit score was a little bit too low and we thought we might have to do that. And as time went on over the course of the contract, we were able to get the credit score up, did, got, got them into a conventional loan and things got a little bit better. So doing that, same appraiser. All they had to do was go change the appraisal from FHA to conventional. So same appraiser. Now, brought up the issue, what about are they gonna do a closer inspection on, on FHA? Here's the interesting thing. FHA has a whole list of stipulations that they're gonna look at on the appraisal or on their guidelines. But basically the rules are the same. They're gonna look, whether it's a conventional appraisal or FHA appraisal, they're gonna be looking for what we call health and safety concerns. If there's broken windows, on, an FA, on a, a conventional loan, most appraisers are gonna say that's gotta be repaired. If they see a crack in the uh, foundation and it's got some moisture around it, I don't care if it's FHA or conventional, they are probably, conventional appraisers are gonna say the same thing. We may need to get that checked. If there's obvious leaks and you can see the stains in the ceilings, I don't care if it's FHA or conventional, they're both going to make a comment about it. Years ago, our son bought a, um, uh, bought a condo, and he was doing a conventional loan. And there was a tile in the second bathroom that was out above the tub near the faucet. Just one tile, but you could actually see the wood behind it. Conventional appraisal said that that had to be repaired had to be inspected and repaired to make sure there wasn't a leak behind it. Now it's conventional, so it's the same. You don't necessarily find differences. That's a fallacy that FHA is gonna be harder than this one. The big difference is the amendatory clause. That is a huge difference. Because here you've got timing, here doesn't matter. It doesn't appraise, you don't have to buy it. Gifts. The big difference in gifts, and I know most of the time your lender's taking care of this, but the big difference in gifts is not the amount. You can, whether, you can have, if you're gonna get a gift, it's gotta come from, generally speaking, a blood relative. It can be your employer, it might be able to be your uh, nonprofit or something, but most of the time you're talking about a blood relative, whether it's FHA or conventional. The big difference is the documentation. FHA requires more docs. When I'm doing a, when I'm doing a conventional loan, I tell every borrower that's getting gifts, and a lot of our borrowers get gifts, I tell them, do not, whatever you do, do not let the donor, mom, dad, aunt, uncle, grandma, grandpa, do not let them give you any money until you talk to me first. I don't want them to transfer money. I don't want them to write you a check. I want them to do anything. All I want you to do is talk to me. We'll take care of it. And here's why. If they'll wire that money directly to the closing attorney on a conventional loan, they just wire the money to the, to the attorney on a conventional loan, all I've got to have is a copy of that transaction record and a gift letter. That's it. I don't have to have anything else. But on FHA, even if they wire the money directly to that attorney, I have to be able to prove that the donor had the necessary funds to gift. So how do I get proof? I have to get a copy of their bank statement the most recent bank statement, the full bank statement, all five, six, seven pages from the donor. How many of you think that mom and dad are just anxious to send that bank statement over to me? They don't want to do it. Now sometimes they'll just do it, no big deal. Sometimes dad will say, well, I'm not sending it to you, period. My other daughter bought a home last year and I didn't have to do a thing. I said, do you recall if they did a conventional or FHA, all right, what difference does it make? Well, if it's conventional, I don't have to have the bank statement, but if it's FHA, I've got to have the bank statement, I'm sorry. Well, what if I don't give it to you? 
well, I guess we don't do the deal. I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to be mean, it's just the rules. They're not my rules, they're HUD's rules. HUD's very strict. So more documentation here, less documentation here. This is very important though. Do not let the donor give that money on a conventional loan until they speak with their lender. Please do not. Last thing are refis. The easiest refinance in the world to do is a VA refinance. They call it a neural. We're not talking about VA, but it's just super easy to do. The next one is going to be FHA. FHA has a streamlined, um, uh, streamlined uh, refinance. If we, don't, we don't check income. We don't check value. All we're going to do is look to see, did you make your last six house payments on time? If you did, I'm going to redo your loan at the lower interest rate. That's how simple it is. Now, here's where it gets a little complicated. Let's say that it's a year down the road and you want to do the refinance. Your credit score when you got your loan was 638. Now it's 702. Plus, it's a year later and you've picked up some equity. Bless you. So now I'm going to do an FHA, now I'm going to do an FHA refinance. And I'm saying to you, before you go and jump and do an FHA refinance, let's just look at conventional. Why? Because at 702, I can probably get you a pretty good deal. And you may have picked up some equity in the property over the course of that 12 or 18 or 24 months. And I can either reduce or eliminate PMI. So even though I'm going to have a slightly higher rate, even though you've got to prove your income, even though I've got to do an appraisal, so even though your cost is going to go up just a little bit more, it still may be in your best interest. But the beauty of this one for FHA, if, all, if, if it's seven months down the road from the time they bought the house and I locked them in at a rate of when they got their home at 7.375, now rates are down at 6.5, not low enough to worry about all the other stuff. Let me just see that you made your last six house payments on time. We'll reduce your rate. And there's some cost involved, but we built it all into the loan anyway. But now they're going to save themselves a lot of money. Okay. Any questions? Yes. Does that mean to refinance an FHA loan? Six months? No, no, no. You, there's, no. there's no prepayment loans on any of these. When I say six months, that's very self-serving. Let me explain. All right. Some of you may have heard me say this before. Any time a borrower pays off a loan, FHA, conventional, VA, USDA, doesn't make a difference. You pay off a loan before you've made six house payments. The loan officer and the company they work for has to pay back 100% of the commission. Whatever they've earned on that, have to pay it back. So could you imagine if somebody went, you went and sold somebody a piece of property and three months later they turn around and sell that property, Mike comes in and says, I gotta take all your commission back because I gotta pay it all back. How would that make you feel? Not very good. So I am totally transparent with people. When people say to me, well, Greg, I only need the loan just till I sell my other house. I'm going to pay it off. I said, you have every right to do that. But can I ask you a favor? If you do that, I got to pay back everything I've made on a loan. My company has paid back everything they made on a loan. Would you mind making six house payments? When I explain it to them that way, everybody just does it. They don't care. It's not that big a deal. All right. Any other questions? Um, can I ask about the, mo the monthly mortgage insurance? Um, unconventional, once you've paid 20%, you can take that off, right? That's a much deeper question than I can answer in, okay. in two minutes. The FHA, that's for the term of the loan, right? This is for the term of the loan. Right. There are ways of getting out of PMI. It's not just as perfectly clear as pay it down to 20 If you pay it down 20% by writing a check for it, Yes, but if it's just, yeah, FHA, nothing you can do about it. The only way to do this is to switch out of there and go into a conventional loan. All right? Thanks, everybody.